Should you get an iPhone 15 Pro Max or save $300 and get a 15 Plus? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys every single difference, skipping the specs but focusing on real world differences. And this year, the results are a lot different than last year and I think you guys are gonna be surprised. Now I mentioned that price difference there and you have a difference of RAM 256 versus 128. Now most people don't need 256, so that's a 300 difference and I was surprised that the memory speed is not much slower even though it is half the capacity now as far as the comfort in hand last year I loved the 14 plus because it was so much lighter but this year the difference is very minimal and with that the 15 Pro Max is actually slightly narrower and slightly shorter than the 15 plus and because of the new curved edges on the front and the back Back, both phones feel very comfortable and it's hard to tell that the 15 Pro Max is slightly thicker. Now we definitely have a difference in camera bumps. The 15 Pro Max sticks out quite a bit more so if you don't like wobble the 15 Plus is a little bit better in that way and one difference this year is that the new titanium no longer feels a lot more premium in the hand compared to the aluminum. They actually feel almost identical. Now of course most people are going to be using a case. So no matter which one you buy, you should definitely get a reliable case like these from our sponsor Casetify, who make the most protective cases out there like their impact case, bounce case, and their brand new ultra bounce and impact ring stand cases. Their best selling impact case is super slim and stylish, offering drop protection of up to four times the military standard with their twister EcoShock inner lining, which you can now also get in the new ring stand variant with a built-in kickstand so you can prop it up for watching videos. If you want more protection, the bounce case has up to six times military drop protection, being 16% slimmer than before. And their newest ultra bounce case takes it up to 10x the military standard with their revolutionary ultra bounce corners and six layers of protection, including the integrated camera lens cover to give you incredible drop protection. All of them are made out of 65% recycled and plant-based materials, featuring MagSafe and being available in a ton of custom customizable prints like this one, which is my personal favorite because of the cool teardown design. So check out one of Caseify's new iPhone 15 cases by going to caseify.com slash maxtechyt and save 15% off your order today. Now the next real world difference is the action button. On the 15 plus you have that classic silent switch, which is really nice, but having this action button, you could do a ton of things. I have mine set to open up the camera app and that is very convenient, but you can also use it for silent mode, focus, camera, flashlight, voice memos, and of course, shortcuts. So you can customize this to whatever you want. And how much does that matter in the real world? Well, I think it is nice compared to just that silent rocker, but I don't think it's something that will make you get the Pro Max instead of the Plus. Now, as far as speakers, the 15 Pro Max is so impressive. It got louder this year, the sound quality is better, and typically the regular iPhones, including the 14 Plus, sounded worse than the Pro variant, but this year I was shocked. Go ahead and take a listen for yourself. The 15 Plus either sounds identical or very close to the Pro Max. And that is awesome The Apple is using really great speakers on both, so you don't really get a downside. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is battery life. I was also impressed with the battery life of the 15 Pro Max. It actually got better, even though they didn't quote it getting better. But even though the 15 Pro Max has a larger battery, the battery life seems to be better on the 15 Plus. Now, I didn't do a crazy in-depth test like Mr. Who's the Boss did, but in his comparison, the 15 Plus is the best phone he has ever tested and in the real world, you can tell. Now, I was not expecting this because the A17 Pro is a three nanometer compared to the A16, which is a mix of four nanometer and 
five nanometer, so it should be less efficient, right? Well, the A17 Pro actually uses up to 14 watts of power, whereas the A16 runs at roughly 10 to 11, so that's up to 40% more power when the phones needs to use high performance. That is crazy, and that results in some great battery life. Now, thankfully, as far as 5G speeds, the 15 Plus this year has the same X70 as the Pro Max, which is awesome, and that actually saves battery life, which is helping it out as well, and the speeds compared to the 14 lineup are quite a bit faster, both outdoors and indoors, and that is really nice to know that this year, you're not gonna be sacrificing speed and reception. Now, as far as charging speed, the 15 Pro Max actually goes up to 27 watts compared to 25, and it takes an hour and 25 minutes for a full charge compared to an hour and 45 minutes, and that's just a difference of how much power it accepts throughout the whole charging cycle. So it's a little bit quicker. Now, another crazy thing this year is that Apple brought the Dynamic Island to the 15 Plus, where last year it still had that old notch. And with that, we did not expect it to get the super bright XDR display that can hit up to 2000 nits. So outdoor brightness is now the same. You get pro level brightness. Same thing for watching HDR video. Uh, the brightness and quality is identical, which is so nice. So as far as the screens, you're not missing out for the most part, but there are a couple stipulations. First off, you do not get the always on display like you get on the 15 Pro Max. That is Apple just limiting it. And this is nice because you can have widgets, you can see your data. It is something that I really enjoy. And with that, you do not get ProMotion. So you get 60 Hertz compared to up to 120. So it's definitely noticeable that the Pro Max is smoother. And if you have a tablet or you had an older phone that had ProMotion, you will notice is the 60 Hertz being a little bit stuttery. But if you haven't experienced a ProMotion before, you won't know the difference and it's gonna be just fine. So I wouldn't make that a huge kind of uh, deal if you're trying to decide. Now, another difference that we have is the RAM. Last year, it was the same, but this year, the Pro Max has bumped up to eight gigs compared to the same six gigs on the Plus model. Now, how much of a difference does that make in the real world? And to be honest, I could not tell. Both of them did a great job with applications, and I think just six gigs is a pretty good middle ground where a couple of years ago, four gigs, you could could see a difference. Now, as far as performance, looking at Geekbench 6, in the single core, we had an 11% difference, and in multi-core, we had a 12% difference. To be honest with you guys, that does not really matter. The A16 Bionic is still a great chip and it's going to be supported for another five years. Now, in terms of graphics performance, here we had a difference of 18% and that is more noticeable, but it's still not a massive difference. Years ago, we'd have a much bigger difference. Now, one thing I have to point out is the new A17 Pro supports ray tracing now, which gives gives you more realistic reflections and shadows, and it also has metal effects upscaling, which makes it easier on the actual chip to get better graphics with lower draws on the GPU. Now, unfortunately, this is brand new. We are waiting for games to come out to support this, and with that, Apple's bringing some console-level games to the iPhone 15 Pro phones only. So you're gonna have to have the A17 Pro. So if you really enjoy games, Gaming, that's something that I would think about. Now, if there is one thing that has dominated the headlines with this launch, that has to be overheating and throttling. People keep talking about the 15 Pro Maxes, 15 Pros getting super hot. So did I notice this between the two phones? And I will say, yes, I did. I did notice that the 15 Pro Max feels hotter in the hand when you are using it. And that's because the new titanium is not a great conductor of heat, but aluminum is a great one. Now using these day to day, I don't think that's a massive difference, even though when you're charging it gets hotter, it feels hotter, especially in certain apps that I think still need some optimization. But I did a 20 minute throttling extreme gaming stress test. And what is interesting is that both phones dimmed down to the same brightness um, when I was running it. So the Plus 
didn't really get any better in that regard. Now, right at the end of the test, the Max had noticeably more heat buildup. It hit 47 degrees Celsius compared to 44 Celsius. And on the back side, you can actually see the outline of the A17 Pro chip and even a bit of the charging coils. Now, if we look at the results from this test, the peak frame rate is roughly 40% higher on the Pro Max with the A17 Pro chip. But this phone with the titanium throttles so quickly that by the end of loop one, the overall performance difference is only 18%. And then after the whole test was done, when they both heated up, the performance difference was 19%. So if you're worried about the performance is getting super slow on a Pro Max, so you're thinking about getting the Plus, well, it ends up being the same once both of them are heated up. Now, the crazy difference though, is that the 15 Plus cooled off very quickly and the screen went to full brightness after about 30 seconds, while on the Pro Max, it took two minutes or longer, showing just how good aluminum is um, at being able to cool off quickly and dissipate heat. So this is something that you're really worrying about or you wanna avoid. That is definitely a plus for the cheaper 15 plus. And now it is time to talk about photo quality because this year we have some big differences. The 15 plus went up to 48 megapixels and it got some extra features and that is amazing because that makes it a way better phone than the 14 plus. But the Pro Max now has that 5X lens and believe it or not, there are actually benefits uh, and negatives with both phones. So I have a bunch of pictures here to show you guys and starting out with a 48 megapixel picture, they look pretty much identical, which is awesome. Now, looking at the selfie cameras here, they actually have the same exact hardware and both have Smart Share 5, so they practically look the same. Now, here's another regular photo. It is 48 megapixel. It looks great at sunset and cropping in. I would say that the 15 plus looks slightly better. And in this shot right here, if I punch in and I look, once again, the 15 Plus has slightly more detail. Now it actually has a newer sensor than the one in the 15 Pro Max, which is actually reused from last year. So that could be it. And now let's talk about the zoom quality because the 15 Plus does not have a dedicated zoom lens. This shot you guys already saw, but I want you guys to see the maximum zoom you could do, which is 25 on the Pro Max and 10 on the Plus. Even here you see the quality difference. And then if I crop in, that is a huge difference here. The same thing in this shot, having the ability to zoom in much more is awesome. And the quality looks better too, even though you're zoomed in more. And based off this sign, you guys could see, I can clearly read everything on the Pro Max, whereas the Plus, it's all garbled up and messed up. So if you find yourself zooming in often, the Pro Max is much better. Now looking at some portrait shots, this 1X looks very similar, but on the Pro Max, you could see we have a little bit better dynamic range. Now, thankfully, both of them can take 2X shots now, which was a issue with the 14 plus, and they look so dang close. They look identical. But the Pro Max now has that 5X telephoto lens, and that allows you to get this beautiful bokeh and remove some of the background compared to the Plus, which 2X is the maximum you can get. It still looks good, but it is not the same. Here's another shot with the sun in the background. I'm getting less um, issues with flaring, and the image just looks really good with that 5X portrait. And the same thing here with this bunny shot. I framed it the same, but having that extra blur looks really nice in certain cases. Now, both ultra-wide lenses have the same 12 megapixels, but the 15 Pro Maxis has autofocus. So here, I could get really close to that flower compared to the Plus. That is the closest I can get. Of course, you can crop, but then the quality goes down quite a bit. And then here, we have a regular ultra-wide shot, and even looking like this without cropping in, the Pro Max looks a little bit more detailed, but then if we look at the center, you definitely notice that detail. Detail. And then on the edges, the difference is massive. So not only do you have the macro mode, the overall quality of the lens is better on the Pro Max. Now there is one issue with the Pro Max that the Plus thankfully doesn't have, even though it now shoots 48 megapixels. You guys could see here that the Pro Max is blurred, and that is because the minimal focusing distance is not very good with this 
48 megapixel uh, camera, whereas the Plus, it looks great. And because of this, if you're shooting a document or a close-up box right here, the Pro Max just doesn't do a good job, where the Plus looks awesome. And this is actually how close I can get, so you guys can see that difference. Now, I talked about this issue last year when Apple launched this 48 megapixel in the Pro phones, and you can get around that by using the macro mode, but then the quality goes down, or by shooting a wide photo and then cropping in, the quality also goes down. And it's nice to know that you don't have that issue with the Plus, so if you shoot a lot of documents, um, things that need close distance, that is really nice. Now going into night mode, I thought that the Plus would get noticeably worse photos, but the shots look pretty much the same, and only in the most extreme lighting, the 15 Pro Max's slightly larger sensor can pick up a little bit more light, and that helps it out. Now one area where the regular iPhones always struggled is low light portraits. So here you guys could see that the Pro Max looks so much better, and that's because it has that LiDAR sensor, and that allows it to enable night mode, with portrait at the same time, and that makes the shots look much better if you like taking low light portraits. So bringing us back to the original question, should you get the 15 Pro Max or should you save $300 and get the 15 Plus? Well, last year I said, do not buy the 14 Plus. There was a massive difference there. But this year, it is very interesting because Apple added enough to this phone while keeping the base price the same that I would say for a lot of people, this is an excellent buy. It has great battery life. You have the dynamic island and the bright display. You have a much better camera than before. And of course, you have USB Type-C, which while it's not as fast as the Pro Max is, most people aren't using it to transfer data anyway. So if you're on the fence and you don't need some of the extra luxuries of the Pro Max or that zoom lens, I would say get the Plus, you will not be disappointed. But if you're gonna keep your phone for a very long time, you have the money to spend. This year, the Pro Max, it's a lot lighter, it's more comfortable, so you're not uh, missing out on that benefit of the Plus series. You can spend the extra money. But I was just very impressed with the Plus this year, and I think it is a great buy. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Go ahead and check out Case Suffice Cases as well. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next one.